Hello YouTube, and today I'm going to talk about analog versus digital. So to start, um, analog and digital is basically really a preference. I'm just going to, when it comes to audio, of course, I'm just going to tell you what you get, you know, and you decide for yourself. So with analog, if you get like a record or a tape or whatever, analog is a direct recording of what happened in the studio for the music, you know. They basically record everything that is being, all the noise that are being made in the studio is recorded onto a metal disc that is sent off to a factory, and then the vinyl records are produced. CDs, on the other hand, are stored and then digitally tampered with and compressed and then put onto a CD or iTunes. Now, doing so, when you're compressing an audio format, what it basically does is it's throwing some of the audio away. So any part of the song that is consistent with another is ditched, and then one part of the consistent note is saved and then pasted over the other notes that were in its place. So if you had a song that was playing a B flat, it saves the B flat, and then it pastes it over a place where another B flat was supposed to go, and the B flat that was originally there is tossed in the trash. So that's kind of how compression works, and it's not really noticeable difference in sound quality if you're not an audiophile, but I am, so I can tell the difference between an mp3 and a lossless file, and it's just, you know, I don't, I don't like digital, but I use digital because I can use it a lot, and it never ever wears out. But records, on the other hand, do wear out. And the thing with records is a record can only sound better than a CD if you have a record made out of a quality material. Break some records! <laughs> what? Whoa! That completely spliced the bass because there are records made out of cheap plastic and rubbers that just don't last very long. Um, like a lot of the transparent records, those are pretty crappy. And, you know, people just buy them because, oh, look, it's transparent. That's really cool. <clears throat> so, yeah. So as long as you have a record made out of quality material and you have a good quality record player, then, you know, you're golden. But you're still not out of the woods. If the record gets warped, then it will hurt the sound quality. If the record gets dirty, it will hurt the sound quality. If, you know, anything that happens to the record will hurt the sound quality. If you listen to the record more than, like, five times a month, then the sound quality will degrade much faster because it's essentially just a piece of plastic with a needle being dragged over the top of it, and that can hurt the sound quality. Now, one thing that a lot of people don't know especially hipsters. You go to like one of those um kind of hipster like stores that sells record players and the record players there are like $300 and they're just total junk. There's nothing they're not that great. They the, the needles are not weighted. The uh, the arms not weighted, so the needles all of the weight of the needle sits directly under the record, so the needle is actually scratching along top of the record to make the sound. And because of this, it can actually make a latency between the sound that's being recorded and the sound that's being outputted. So it would sound like a tweeter that is echoing everything that happens with your mid-range or vice versa. And it just resorts in terrible sound quality and it also damages the records. So if you're going to be a record enthusiast, then get a record player that has a weighted tone arm. It's very important. So, you know... Just keep that in mind. As long as you keep that in mind and you follow by that rule, then you will have amazing sound quality with records that can easily beat a CD. Now, if you're kind of a cheap motherfucker like I am, then you've probably gone with um, compressed digital files. Now, there are high-quality MP3s, but those still are not nearly as good as a lossless file. 
and mp3s are compressed sometimes they're digitally tampered with and sometimes they're even more compressed like and same with mp4s except mp4s include video now with audio it's digital digital audio is not good analog audio is better because it's direct but it doesn't last as long so you know there's that Digital audio, though, is able to actually articulate certain points in the song. So if there's a certain note in a song or whatever you like, that can be tampered with to your liking in a digital format. Whereas with audio, I mean, with analog, it can't. It's stuck the way it is, and you like it or leave it. You can't tamper with it too much. You might be able to turn up the bass and the treble on your amplifier or equalizer or whatever, but that's about all you can do, really. So... Yeah, if you like to be, if you like to DJ and you like to mess with the quality and the um, the tone of the song, then you might you might want to go digital. So now we go into video. Now digital video is better than analog video because analog video was usually recorded with, you know, regular quality cameras because they didn't they either didn't have HD yet or it was too expensive. So if you like say, oh, I prefer watching movies on VHS than Blu-ray, then you're just, you're not very smart, I'll tell you that. Because it, if you're watching an old movie on VHS, it does have a cool effect, and it does sound original, but if you actually care for the quality of the picture and the quality of the sound, mainly quality of the picture, then you would go with a CD or a Blu-ray, or I mean DVD or a Blu-ray. Because digital video has gotten better. Now, of course, there is some digital videos that's not good. Like, a lot of people will say, oh, it's a 4K camera? Shit, oh, yeah, I'll get that. I'm sold. Yeah, sure. But then people will put, like, really bad SD cards in it, or the camera itself's just not that good of a camera overall. And then you get compression artifacts from weak and not very accurate compression. And what a compression artifact is, is it with a video, compression works pretty much the same as it does with audio. There's if uh, if you, there's a part of the video and it's a solid picture and then something happens in the middle of the screen, everything around it is just one solid picture. There's no movement because it's just being pasted over. And the only part that's being refreshed is the part where there's actually some movement going on. So then if there's a sudden change in scenery, the screen gets a lot of squares on it. In fact, one of my videos was like that. Here, here's what it looks like. Yeah, as you can see, it's not very good. It's the street moving, so it's a consistent color with a little bit of imperfections in the color, so it creates a lot of compression artifacts. Not very good. So that's what a compression artifact is. That usually, I mean, even if you get a high-quality camera, that can happen if you put in a really, like, low-class SD card or whatever it is you're using to record the file. So digital audio has gotten better, but, I mean, keep in mind, cheap is still cheap. <laughs> And I am a pretty cheap guy. If you've noticed, my Sony, my um, Sony Handycam has a very nice picture, but in the wrong kind of lighting, you get lots of video noise. As you can see here on my Acer Predator 17 review, there was lots of video noise because of the lighting conditions. They just weren't suited for the camera. So that is an issue that you can have. Now, in proper lighting, the camera looks great. It was a $200 camera, it's 9.2 megapixels, 1080p, 60Hz, it's a great camera, but just doesn't work very well in low light situations. And that can be a case with a lot of cameras, even high quality cameras. Like other YouTubers who've got millions of subscribers use really high quality cameras and occasionally, from time to time, will get the lighting situation wrong and they just get some video noise or a couple of compression artifacts. Now, not really compression artifacts, just video noise, which I want to say is a part of a compression artifact, but it's it's really not. It has nothing to do with compression. Now, there is software you can use to clean up video noise, but I don't, because I don't care. You know, it's... Anyway. Now let's go to um, amplifiers. An analog amplifier or a digital amplifier. Now... Um, there are some power amplifiers on Amazon that are actually very cheap. There's one that's like $10 and it claims to be 100 watts and it says it's a digital, but it's more like 5 watts and it's not digital, it's analog. But for powering some really crappy, you know, low-end speakers, it's good, you know. There's another amplifier that actually is a digital amplifier. I saw it. It has an L 
an LP2020 chip in it, and it is called the Lapai LP2020A+. It is a fantastic little amplifier, and it's it says 20 watts, and it's really producing less, but I've seen that thing power some freaking pro audio speakers with, I mean, there was distortion, but it was still pretty, you know, random bystander would never notice the difference. So it is a very good little amplifier, and it is digital and cheap. However, you'll notice that a lot of analog amplifiers, like tube amplifiers and whatnot, are charging a fortune. So why is it a technology that went obsolete after 1960 is becoming expensive again? Mainly because of hipsters. <laughs> I actually bought a tube amplifier. It is called the Knob Sound... MS-10 DK Mark II, and it is a half digital, half analog amplifier. It has four vacuum tubes on it, and it look. I'd mainly bought it because it looks really, really nice, and I. Al it's also really good for headphones, so I can have it power my speakers, or I can just plug in some headphones if you know nobody else around me wants to be hearing my music, like if it's late at night or something. So very nice. But, see, the thing is, when you're infusing digital with analog, it doesn't work out too well. For instance, this is the one with Bluetooth and USB capabilities, and whenever you use any kind of digital streaming source, the sound quality is not very good. It's very staticky, very clippy, very poor, very bad. However, when you plug into it via analog, like RCA or 3.5mm jack, sound quality is phenomenal. It's just great. And, I got, I, like I said, I only got this amplifier mainly because it looks cool. Now, tube amplifiers actually do affect the sound. Now, I'm not going to say they make it sound better or worse, but they make it sound different. The sound the sound is different. It's very pleasing to me. I like it, but other people might not like it. So, yeah, like it's not a trans it's not doesn't have transistors in it, which were used in the 1960s after we stopped using tube amps. I mean, vacuum tubes. Now, I don't want to say we completely stopped using them because CRT televisions, well, those are vacuum tubes. CRT stands for cathode ray tube, or cathode ray tube, whatever you want to call it. I say cathode, most people say cathode, some people say cathode. Anyways, so, that is still a vacuum tube, but the, um, whatever's inside it, I don't know what's in your CRT, they can vary. Some of, believe it or not, they're actually full HD CRTs with HDMI and everything. That doesn't make any sense. Why? I mean, uh, we're going backwards. So, most CRTs will have some R basic RCA composite, not component composite. So you're not getting HD, and you're not you're not well, you're just basically not getting HD. You have a couple of composite from two to three, and then you've also got the coaxial input for your cable provider or your satellite provider or whatever and those TVs are very simplistic but they do have digital components in them but the cathode ray tubes analog I don't know what my point is with this I don't even know why I brought this up I'm sorry for wasting your time so that um, pretty much wraps up the video I think I've covered everything and you know stay tuned to the channel I've got a video on some legacy software and I've also got a video coming up on Apple, because I've got a lot of stuff I want to say about Apple right now, and I'm sorry, but it's not going to be good stuff. I mean, it's going to be good content, but I'm not going to be saying good stuff about Apple. So, um, yeah, see y'all later.